Hey everybody, welcome to From the Top, presented by Armina Stone. So as you see, we have one TV out in the middle here because it's been a crazy weather day here in Pittsburgh. Storms are coming in, it's like 80 degrees. And this guy right here drove in all the way from Philadelphia to be here with us today. So we gotta get him out before the weather gets even worse. But I want you to welcome our guest today, Sean Doddlin. He is the executive director of Hope and Door, which helps so many families in the area avoid homelessness. Sean, thanks for driving all the way over here. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes. And I, I wasn't aware that there's going to be a tornado and a hailstorm and all these things. So we'll see uh, how my drive home goes, but oh, ha yeah. happy to be here. Even walking in, I felt the wind. It's well, I didn't know up. it was going to be 85 degrees either when I got here. I got out of the gas station and I was like, what is going on? I know. You yeah. got to take the blazer off. Yeah. So I, a couple <laughs> surprises today, but uh, it's all working out. Well, we're glad you're here with us. Let's talk more about Hope and Door and how you help families. What is it and what all do you do? Right. So we are really trying to get ahead of the family homelessness crisis. So one of the things that's become um, increasingly common is um, you see families that have been renting their home for a long time and have been in a stable housing situation, and you see one financial emergency pop up, something like uh, a kid in the home gets sick or somebody uh, lost their job due to downsizing um, that was out of their control, right? These things that happen in everyday life, but for families who don't have um, maybe significant savings and are working on their own upward mobility, they're in an apartment home, they're in a rental home, this financial emergency can get them on the brink of eviction really quickly. So we step in and we provide emergency relief during those situations. And just to take a step back from that, the reason we're so motivated to do that is that the homelessness crisis in the country is, is real um, and it's growing. So currently on any given day, there are 600,000 people that are without housing in the United States. And 30% of that number is made up of families with children. Mm -hmm. So that's where we focus our efforts is on those families with children. And we try to get ahead of the homelessness crisis. So before a family is evicted, before they're without housing, we step in and we issue emergency rent relief to them and help keep their environment stable during a financial mm -hmm. emergency. How long could you help a family out? So we typically provide a one-time grant for two months of rent. Um, and the reason is most research shows that for a family who has a financial crisis, it's one to two months of rent that they miss. And also that kind of aligns with when the eviction process takes place for a family. Oh. So for a property management company, they have to abide by fair housing laws that are in place as somebody who provides rental homes. Um, you know, they have to treat everybody equally. Um, and if a family misses that second rent payment, they're likely going to be evicted. So we feel like let's get ahead of that. Yeah. And you're right. That's all they need. They sometimes they just need a month or even a couple of weeks just to get back on their feet again. Yeah, it's, exactly. Exactly. Uh, and, and, you know, like we said, one one problem can lead to that one small, seemingly small financial emergency. If it sets you back a couple of weeks or a month, unfortunately, yeah. eviction is, is just right around the corner for a lot of families. Even in our area, I was telling you a little bit about the downtown area and it, it wasn't what it used to be in Pittsburgh. I know the pandemic played a huge part of that. But in our area, I mean, do, what numbers do you have in even in the state of Pennsylvania or in Philly? I know Pittsburgh and Philly are the two bigger cities, but I'm sure you see it in smaller areas and rural areas as well. Yeah, it is really spread out um, throughout not just the major urban areas, but but across some of the more rural areas as well. Mm -hmm. and, and really our goal, you know, we're headquartered in southeast Pennsylvania, kind of right outside Philadelphia. And that's where you're going to see, um, obviously, the, the largest um, homeless population. But it's simply due to that being the largest population center of the state and, and Pittsburgh being the second largest. Right. So they are the two largest areas where we see the homelessness crisis happening. Um, but it's really everywhere in between as well. You kind of see the two major pockets of this crisis in Philadelphia and in Pittsburgh and, and kind of uh, spread out a little bit, um, you know, less condensed between those two areas. And that's why we're so excited to come to Pittsburgh, make a huge impact, right? We have been doing a lot of work in Philadelphia, a lot of work in Delaware and Maryland. Mm -hmm. And we feel like, you know, being a company that's based in Pennsylvania, 
we want to make sure that Pittsburgh has all the help it needs from us and everywhere in between as well. We certainly don't neglect um, the more rural population, the areas that are more spread out. Um, fortunately, our grant is, is built on efficiency. We are 100% online application. We work with landlords remotely. So um, we're able to issue grants across the state. And we just feel like, hey, we're doing it in Philly. Let's make sure we're here in Pittsburgh, make sure everybody knows about us. Because um, as you mentioned, the, the crisis is as real here as anywhere else. How many families would you say you help like uh, per it, year? Yeah, it's we're growing so rapidly. I mean, so it's the first week of April right now. I mean, just looking I can't at the, believe it. Yeah, I know. Um, in, in just the last six weeks, we've distributed $35,000 to 12 families in need, right? Wow. But the next six weeks will be more than that. Um, so, so this year, we're kind of off to this booming start. Um, and last year, we were really revamping our program. Um, so we, we had a, a model that was, that was really helping a lot of families, but it wasn't scalable. And our goal now mm -hmm. is, hey, we realize this problem is bigger than we thought. So our goal is to help 80 families inside of 2023. Um, and to do over double that next year. That's and fantastic. We're up and running and it's getting really busy. Um, and you know, on one side of things, that's, that's really, um, it's a kind of a shocking reality that there are so many families who need this help so quickly, mm -hmm. um, which is why we're expanding our geographic footprint is that we, we realize, Hey, if, if we can issue 35, $40,000 of grants in six weeks and only so many markets know about us, Imagine what's going to happen when we're known across multiple states, right? Oh, exactly. And how many families are going to be helped like that. So, um, yeah, th this year we're off to a really quick start, and that's just kind of the, the most recent, um, you know, month or two. And, and we'll see the rest of the year. I think we're going to be busy. And like I said, 80 families this year, and uh, I think we're going to be well beyond that by the time the end of the year comes. And, yeah. Um, over double next year. Wow, I'm sure. And, and why did you want to get involved with such a great organization that helps so many people? Because it's been a few years since you've been with Hope and Door now. Right. You know, to be honest, a lot of it comes down to the leadership. So I come from the nonprofit world, and now I work in the nonprofit world and the apartment industry, which is totally foreign to me. <laughs> uh, Multifamily housing, apartments, all, all this, I didn't know the first thing about it. Um, I come from nonprofit just because um, it's where my passion is helping people full time. But when I met Hope and Doors leadership, um, so the organization was launched by Burger Communities, mm -hmm. um, specifically Dan Berger, who's the CEO, um, is our chairman of the board. And when I met with him and I met with the president of his, uh, his organization, Anne Marie Nicholas, and I got to learn about their passion for helping people. Uh, so Burger Communities is an apartment company, but they actually don't receive any of the benefit of what Hope and Door does. We exist exclusively to serve other residents, other property management companies. So when I came to understand that, that this is an organization that was created um, just purely because they wanted to do good for other families who live with other property management companies, is that these people get it. Yeah. That, you know, they're, they're committing so much of their time, their energy, their resources um, to an organization that doesn't even benefit their own company. Um, that was really something that drew me in and maybe just want to get on board with that. So. Yeah, that's fantastic. And doing a lot with different partners that you have, financial supporters, even the events, is that where most of the grant money comes from? Yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's a couple of ways that, that our, um, our funds come about. So for one, you know, being in the apartment industry, um, mm -hmm. a lot of people who are on the supplier partner side, the services side, the financial partnership side, a lot of the people who work within the industry, um, they're aware of the, the homelessness crisis because so many of their partners who are the apartment owners and managers, um, you know, they, they recognize that these, the fair housing laws that are in place, they don't allow the apartment owners and managers to, to make exceptions. So they're aware of this and they feel like it's a way to really make an impact directly in the business that they're partners with. Um, so a lot of those people have, have really paid it forward, have been incredibly generous. And, um, and then we host a lot of events where those supplier partners, finance partners, they have the opportunity to network with those property managers. And in addition to the people who have, have given from the supplier partner side, a lot of these property management companies have been just incredibly generous. They recognize that hey, what we're doing here by issuing a grant directly to the property management company in the name of their resident, mm -hmm. of course it helps the resident, but it also helps the property management company. Their delinquency sure. numbers are down, their eviction numbers are down, they're not gonna have downtime in that apartment, they're not gonna turn the apartment over, they're gonna receive the rent payment they were, would never have received because this family couldn't pay it. So 
It's helping their bottom line. Um, so between the property management companies and the people who support those property management companies, there has been just an incredible amount of generosity that's provided the needs for these families so far. Mm -hmm. And, um, and of course that's, that's our model to grow is to, to work with more property managers, work with more supplier partners, more financial partners, more service providers. Um, and you know, kind of our approach is, Hey, we'll, we'll prove it to you. Mm -hmm. Let us come into your market and issue 30, 40, 50 grants to families in need. And when you see the stability that we're providing to the community, the long-term stability, right? Not just for the apartment manager, but for the families in the community, um, people will be motivated to continue to support. Yeah. Well, Armina Stone is so proud to support Hope and Door. I know you do a lot of work with PAA, the Pennsylvania Apartment Association, and there's a big event coming up in yeah. a couple of weeks. Tell us a little sure. bit about that. And it's at a great place too, Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist. It's a good spot in Pittsburgh. I've heard. And uh, <laughs> so we rented out the upstairs. They have a VIP lounge and we rented it oh, out for yeah. the night. So it'll be Wednesday, April 19th from six to nine. Um, so a little uh, after hours, good time to get together. And yeah. uh, they're uh, a martini bar. So that will be fun. Oh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, what we'll do is we'll get together. We'll invite a lot of the local property managers, property owners, and a lot of the supplier partners as well. Mm -hmm. And this event will really kind of serve as a, a welcome to Pittsburgh for Hope and Door. Um, and Armina Stone has been incredible inviting us out here and helping us spread the word and, and you know, just promote the event. Um, as you mentioned, they work a lot with, with PAA, as do we. The Pennsylvania Apartment Association has really recognized that Hope and Door is making a huge impact mm -hmm. um, you know, on the families who live with their member companies. So it's been really nice to see the support from not only PAA, but from their member, their member partners um, like Armina Stone. And if everybody supported us like Armina does, uh, we'd, we'd be ahead of the game. So we really <laughs> are appreciative of that. Um, so at, at the event on the 19th, we'll kind of share you know, our plan for the coming couple of years, mm -hmm. how we see ourselves making an impact on the Pittsburgh market. And we'll share more details on the grant making program let these property managers know, hey, here's how we're going to serve your residents. Here's how we're going to serve you. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'll be there. Some of our board members will be there to answer any questions about, you know, the details of how the grant works, how, how the finances work, um, and really let them know kind of what our plan is to, to make an impact here in Pittsburgh. If, if somebody listening can't attend that event, yeah. how can they still get involved with Hope and Door or even just become a donor? Right. So hopeanddoor.org. Uh, That's is, easy. <laughs> easy enough. That's where we keep everything that you would want to learn about Hope and Door. Um, we have a, a page that kind of walks through, you know, the family homelessness crisis and what it looks like, um, how the Hope and Door grant really makes a tangible impact to individual families um, and then how they can support. And um, what someone will find if they want to become a donor is that all of our um, support is kind of built around this idea that a two month grant mm -hmm. typically averages about $3,000. So we've got options if somebody wants to support one family or if they want to support, you know, one one hundredth of a family every month, right? $30 a month. Uh, every time we get a hundred people to do that, that's a new grant, right? We, yeah. And we've got options for beyond that for our, our corporate partners and, and, and sponsors. Um, but we really feel like, hey, every time we raise $3,000, that's one family that's not going to be, be evicted. That's one family that's not going to become homeless because of that. Mm -hmm. um, so hopeandor.org is the, is the best place to go. Um, and there's a lot to learn there. And we have, um, you, know, you can sign up with your email there. You can become a donor. Um, and you can really learn a lot about what we're doing to impact the homelessness crisis. Yeah. Well, there's so many great places in Pittsburgh, like one that comes to mind right away. It's called Light of Life Rescue Mission. They are an incredible organization. But with them, you can I believe you can stay up to a couple of days, even mm -hmm. a week, but, you, you know, it's not something like what you offer, like right. an apartment rent free for one or two months. So this is something that would really help families. Plus, you, you still get your privacy. You still get your own space, too. And our thought special. is, right, and these families who, you know, they currently live in an apartment home, um, we don't want them to leave. We want them to stay in their apartment home because, you know, you think mm -hmm. about the, the far reaching effects of. Um, of eviction, obviously on the economic side, you've got the, the, the parents in the home or the parent in the home who, you know, wants to provide for their children, wants to, you know, figure out a way to, to have a stable income to get over this financial emergency. But then you think about the psychological and emotional effects on the kids in the home. And that's why we're so committed to families staying in the home they've been in. 
So we're going to cover their rent for them, but we're not going to have them relocate mm -hmm. because the second you have a family relocate, you have kids who they went to school on Tuesday, but if the eviction goes through on Wednesday, all yeah. of a sudden they're not there on Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. They're, they're, you know, at a rescue mission, they're at a shelter, they're with a friend or a family who, you know, they may be across the city or across the state or who knows where they're going to be when they're displaced. And our goal mm -hmm. is to, um, to mitigate those issues because we see that the second you pull a kid from their support system, whether that's their friends, whether that's their after school care, their child care, their babysitting, um, it, the emotional damage is real for the kids. And also it, it doesn't allow the parents the leeway they need to get back on their feet, whether it's finding a new job, you know, returning to work after some time off, you need to continue to rely on the support systems that you have in your current home. Mm -hmm. um, so many people depend on family and friends for childcare public transportation, right? Or, or shared transportation, all these things, the second a family is displaced, a lot of those go away. So it becomes this, this really difficult spiral of one eviction leads to this situational homelessness that is not uh, something that's easy to solve. So we're really committed to getting ahead of that and helping families remain in their homes and avoid homelessness at all costs. Um, and that's what our grant's designed to do. Well, you guys have done so much fantastic work and to hear all the families you've helped just within like the last six weeks is really incredible. What's the future look like for Hope and Door? Yeah. I'm sure you'll be expanding. That's the goal. Um, when you when you get to meet uh, some people on our board and some of our leadership, you'll, you'll uh, understand that they are uh, they're excited about growth, uh, as am I. And our goal is to have these grants available across the country. Uh, within five years. And, oh, and I wow. think we'll be done with that beforehand. Um, it's, it's really the response from the apartment industry and, and from the people who work within the industry have just been amazing. Um, so, you know, this year we're working on making sure that Pennsylvania is covered wall to wall, anybody who needs us, as well as Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, Virginia. Wow. Um, but, you know, soon after that, it'll be Ohio and Massachusetts. And soon after that, it will be Florida and Colorado, you know, so, yeah. so we've got a, a plan in place. And really the way we see it, it the more buy-in we get from the property managers and property owners who are willing to give us a shot, try mm -hmm. out this grant. And, and for them, the, the feedback has just been incredible. They've seen, you know, not only is it helping all of their residents stay in their homes, but it's also improving their financial bottom line. Yeah. Um, so our goal is to be nationwide. And I think we're on the fast track. The way things have been going over the last two years, we're really ramping up quickly. And, um, you know, we've got a special passion for Pennsylvania here but the need is across the country. So that's yeah, our goal. It really is. So April 19th, you don't want to miss it. No. And you can get your tickets now. Yeah. You can still get them. <laughs> you can. And, and, you <laughs> They're know, still available. One of our, one of our thoughts <laughs> is for the, for the people in the industry who want to be there, um, we really ask them to consider sponsoring a family ahead of time, right? On our yeah. website, there's, a, there's an option to donate, and, and every $3,000 is one family. That's going to remain easy. In the, I just saw it. Yeah, it's super easy. Mm -hmm. uh, Selena's doing it right now. I'm doing got it right up. now. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we think that when we come to a new market, how incredible it is if we've got our first 20 or 30 families funded by yeah. that larger community already. That mm -hmm. allows us to come in and make an instant impact. Um, and then, you know, April 19th gets to be a celebration, right? Hey, here's here's the wonderful news that we're going to help these first 20 families, these first 30 families mm -hmm. as soon as they have the need. Um, so it's always exciting for me when we when we go to a new place, a new city, a new town, and we've already got so many people who are supporting the cause because that means the first thing we get to do is help people. Yeah. And, um, you know, in the nonprofit world and, and so many people uh, work with multiple nonprofits. I know Armina Stone supports a ton of different charities um, and the PAA helps a ton of different charities. Um, and, you know, it's always about building. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? But we can come somewhere new and we've already got the funding to make an impact instantly in that community. That is, um, you know, it makes makes my job a lot more fun when what I get to do is help as, as opposed oh, yeah. to, to, to <laughs> hope to help. Um, so we, we're looking to come in and make an instant impact. We know that the crisis is real in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you mentioned, you know, there are there are pockets of the town that, that need the help immediately. And that's our goal is to come in and to begin to issue these grants. Um, day one. So we're we're here, we're ready to do it. And we just ask that the people who, who come to the event would consider paying it forward, sponsor a family in advance, um, and then come out on the 19th, have a great time, get get to meet our leadership, meet our team, um, ask all the questions. The more educated people are about the homelessness crisis, the more educated they are about our grant process, mm -hmm. the better it is for everyone because we can get the help to the people who need it more quickly. 
And you can have a delicious martini. A delicious ah. martini. We've got some good food options, too. Oh, uh, we got good. a whole menu. Yeah, I think we overordered. <laughs> no, you could never overorder. Yeah, we'll see. It was certainly not at the bar. But the food, we'll see. We ordered quite a bit. Um, and we got a cool band coming, which will be fun. So, you know, yeah. it'll, it'll be a three-hour after work event. But, you know, two hours of it will be... Uh, we'll be partying and for an hour we'll be working. Oh, yeah. So, um, well, you know, even when you go on your page and you hit donate, mm -hmm. whatever amount you do, I mean, it's so easy. You just type it in and there you go. But even if you did a monthly, yeah. if you could only maybe afford $10 or yeah. $5, that still makes a huge difference. You, Absolutely. You, any dollar amount. Any dollar amount. And the recurring donation is huge because we, yeah. we have, we turn over these grant applications very quickly, right? So if a family has a crisis, especially you think about eviction, it's not a long drawn out process. In most cases, it's pretty quick. If you've missed one month of rent, when that second month doesn't get paid, that family's gonna be evicted quickly. Mm -hmm. So we turn around these grants inside of a week, uh, two weeks at the most. Um, so our needs are constantly rolling over because we issue grants so quickly. Um, when a family applies, you know, there's going to be um, a staff review done by one of our team members. They really, they'll see what the family situation is, make sure they match our criteria. After that, we pass it on to a review committee. That committee is made up of people who are apartment industry professionals. They've been doing it for decades, a lot longer than I have. Um, and once that rev once that review is completed, we issue funds, you know, next business day. So we are turning grants over very quickly, and that means that our funding need is turning over very quickly as well. Mm -hmm. So to know that there is continued monthly support in any dollar amount makes a huge difference. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because it is yeah. an ongoing need and, and that's because we're issuing grants, you know, constantly. Well, you guys are doing amazing work. I know the event on the 19th will be fantastic and we just want to thank you again for coming all the way out here and hopefully you have an easy, smooth ride back to Philly <laughs> and the weather won't be an issue. We'll see. And yeah. I, I mean, I'll, you I'll let you know, know when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please let us know when you get back I safely. Will. But I, I'm so glad to be here and glad to see that Armina Stone is continuing to be so generous to to Hope and Door and other other industry partners like us. Um, so again, what Armina is doing, what the PAA is doing to support this cause uh, is just incredible. So we're so thankful for, for the support and for the promotion of the event. We hope of that course. everyone comes out on the 19th, 6 yes. o'clock at Olive War Twist. 6 o'clock. Um, <laughs> come out and have a good time and, and learn how you can make an impact with us. Awesome, Sean. Well, thank you so much again. Of course. Sean Doddlin, Executive Director of Hope and Door. And again, it's hopeanddoor.org. Yes, hopeanddoor.org. <laughs> See you next time, everybody.